Okay, good afternoon to you all. Uh, my name is Dara from the Cork Institute of Technology and this is my colleague Roisin. So our project is um, Teletools, which is essentially a resource aimed at um, instructing um, instructors on how to use uh, TEL tools in a pedagogically effective fashion. So we've been extremely lucky in the project partnership uh, which we have. We are collaborating with UCC, DIT, um, IT Tralee and UCD um, to develop the project and all of whom have been um, fantastic to work with. So we previously, this partnership previously worked together on NDLR projects. We would have all been quite involved with um, existing technology enhanced learning work and um, we would all have kind of have a common kind of goal, I guess, in terms of uh, staff development and empowerment and innovation and best practice and so forth. So in terms of the project, um, the kind of rationale, I guess, behind the project is that um, the advantage of technology enhanced learning is that maybe it facilitates evolution of a lecturer's role beyond content delivery into areas to do with facilitating active learning. But obviously, um, this isn't something which lecturers should or could be expected to handle by themselves. There has to be training, there has to be guidance. Um, one difficulty which um, our research indicated with technology enhanced learning training is actually attempting also to future-proof TEL. So because technology is consistently changing, um, it's important to you know, try and future-proof training you provide to instructors so that you know what you teach them will still be useful even though the pet even though the technology might evolve quite a bit and so uh, as I'll come to in a minute our project was very much focused on putting effective pedagogy first in order to in order to attempt to address that issue so the um, if that was the rationale then the general project routine um, or plan is as follows so to create learning content on technology enhanced learning to develop an online platform to facilitate uh, delivery of this learning to hold information sessions for teaching and for feedback and to pilot the content and the online platform and then that brings us back to the initial point so the idea is that we would kind of try and iteratively, iteratively develop and improve uh, both the content the uh, online platform and the um, information sessions as the project progressed so the main outcomes projected from this project are um, obviously uh, an online platform aimed at facil facilitating continuous professional development for Irish instructors who might like to employ technology enhanced learning in their classroom. Um, a set of modular kind of learning content um, within the platform, and I'll deal with this slightly more complicated issue in a minute. Um, we see the content as forming kind of short media rich units, uh, which we're currently calling blocks. Uh, focused on a specific kind of practical aspect of implementing uh, effective technology enhanced learning. So implementing a particular um, teaching or learning approach using a particular digital tool. Um, these blocks are then organized into stacks which will kind of string together to form kind of um, units with larger learning objectives. I'm aware that it's extremely complicated and convoluted. I only have a slightly better understanding of it than anyone else here. So. Um, I'll, uh, I'll maybe go into that in a little bit more detail in a minute. Um, and in addition to this, as I mentioned, we hope to hold um, information sessions. So these would be accompanying synchronous training and they'd be aimed at individuals involved in Irish third level institutions and hopefully potentially beyond. Um, and they would be scheduled to uh, coincide with the piloting of the project and excuse me, the uh, people being able to access the platform and the training. So in terms of the project methodology, um, CIT, IT, Tralee and DIT are currently the content development partners. Um, UCD have taken on the role of quality assurance and to make sure that we don't go too far off the path. Um, UCC are, devel are kind of at the moment scope development, so they're looking at the amount of content that the platform uh, should contain, um, the, uh, the type of material that should be covered, um, what the uh, what the blocks should be, how those should form the stacks, how those should form playlists, which are groups of stacks. Um, at the moment, um, we're holding Skype calls or Adobe Connect sessions every two weeks to try and keep communication high and to make sure that um, nobody's lost at any stage during the project. Um, we're also using Google Drive uh, to host all our content for transparency and collaboration purposes. So to date, um, luckily we've kind of remained on track. Um, the first end of content development sessions is due to end by the end of July. Uh, piloting has been performed over the last month or two as well, and that is due to end in July, after which a pilot report will be developed. So in terms of the project outcomes to date, 
Um, initially, we began by um, attempting to identify some of the opportunities or barriers to technology enhanced learning in higher education to inform some of the, pro some of the uh, practice in the project. So um, UCC put together a document which contains surveys on TEL from, um, from UCC, ITT, and also from the 20 questions on technology enhanced learning um, put together by the, excuse me, by the National Forum. Um, so the findings from that were particularly interesting. Um, one kind of element, and I'll come back to it later on as well, is um, the, uh, what that kind of research found was that very often um, third level instructors were quite interested in technology enhanced learning, but they ha didn't have the, um, they, uh, didn't, they weren't aware of the possibilities of it, they uh, weren't aware of any training, and they also weren't aware of um, where they could access this training. Um, learning content in the platform then, as I mentioned, is designed to be very granular and very flexible. Um, and this is to suit learner needs appropriately, but it's also to allow for quick digestion of material. So um, one of the other findings from the research which was conducted at the beginning of the project is that uh, third level instructors are very busy people. They only have so much time to dedicate to training. So one of the an important element which we kind of wanted to make sure remained in the project was that learning content was quite digestible, that people would be able to access and take the information there quickly and then put it to use quite quickly. So in terms of content in the platform, uh, you may have to bear with me slightly here. Um, the content in the platform is consistent of what we are referring to at the moment as blocks. So blocks are essentially just providing practical information on how to facilitate a particular teaching and learning approach using a digital TEL tool. And as I mentioned, the idea that behind these blocks is that they're quite short, they're hopefully quite practical, and the information within them is quite digestible. Um, they're also quite media rich, so we're using interactive video, animation, uh, text, and imagery. Within the platform then as well, a stack, uh, number two, is a collection of blocks, and that's designed to uh, fulfill an even larger learning outcome. So the example which is there is that um, a stack dealing with, say, reflective practice would consist of maybe four blocks, um, some pedagogical information about reflective practice, which would be the first block, um, then uh, detailing how to use a particular digital tool in order to facilitate reflective practice, so using blogs for reflective practice, e-portfolios, and mind maps. Finally, then, a third category, number three, would be a playlist. So a playlist then would be a collection of stacks and that will be designed to facilitate an even larger learning outcome. So for example, and again, this is obviously quite rough, but um, uh, a playlist to do with assessment might include stacks from formative assessment, summative assessment, diagnostic assessment, and group or peer-based assessment. Um, within each block, um, there'd be a number of kind of content headings. So um, one element which UCC quite uh, graciously provided for us was in a kind of an instructor point of view. So initially when we began the project, we were quite focused on technology kind of point of view. Um, UCC were extremely useful in kind of, I suppose, trying to put instructors first. So um, to try and ensure that the information that was contained in these learning units was focused on what would be practical to instructors. So to that and content heading within a block would be, what is the software? Where can they get it? How can they use it for a particular teaching approach? So, for example, how should I use blogs for continuous assessment? Um, and then how to use this effectively, how to get started, and then what else should they know, which is additional resources, and how to use uh, particular technologies or more information or case studies about, excuse me, about that particular teaching and learning approach. Um, so content development, um, to date there's been 20 scripts developed so far, and we initially developed a template for the material to be developed in a block. Um, we have a project content scope plan developed by UCC, uh, which provides a map of the content. So this is essentially a breakdown of the content in the platform, um, how the blocks should form stacks, how the stacks should form playlists. It's very much a work in progress, but it's, we're hoping it's something that we'll continue developing until the end of the project. Um, UCD have, very, have put together a quality insurance plan to ensure that um, uh, all of the developed material is cohesive, consistent, so on and so forth. Platform development is currently ongoing. It's currently in early prototyping. But work has been done on the structure and the processes and so forth. And we've been kind of working on this over the last while and intend to continue working on it for the near future. Um, one useful element which we've developed as well as part of our discussions and research um, was this um, idea of, 
personas. So, sorry, you might just bear with me two seconds. So, uh, personas um, are essentially kind of, I suppose, keeping in mind the point of view of a particular of individuals who might come to the platform looking for content. These personas were maybe just kind of um, caricatures of particular individuals who might be kind of, for example, who might um, be quite up to date with technology enhanced learning. So coming to the platform, what would the benefits for them be? What would their pain points be in terms of um, learning about technology enhanced learning or applying uh, technology enhanced learning down to um, individuals who would be quite inexperienced with technology enhanced learning and who might benefit from um, a different perspective or a different approach. Um, so that's been useful, I guess, in trying to maintain, trying to ensure that we kind of uh, keep the individual in mind. Um, we have a very, no, I apologize for this, but we have an extremely rough prototype of um, the platform. This is even rougher than I would like it to be even at this early stage. Um, but just to very quickly show you this, just as a very kind of quick breakdown of, um, uh, at a very general level, how, uh, how the online platform might work. Now, I would say, again, this is extremely rough, so um, it's barely indicative of what the final product would be. So um, I'd just be, um, in I just encourage you to bear that in mind. So within the platform, it's possible to access the different stacks. Within the individual stacks, then, um, it's possible to access um, certain blocks. Um, within the blocks, then, is, um, is content on how to, um, in this case, on how to use a blog for continuous assessment. So going back to the uh, headers, which I mentioned for content earlier, um, uh, they would deal with introducing the individual to the software. Um, trying to present them with some ways in which to use the software um, and then trying to get them started, so giving them a practical task to go off and do to begin their process of, um, of using that particular, particular piece of software for a teaching and learning approach, as well as resources on um, uh, technical information on how to use, um, how to use the uh, how to use a piece of software. Software. We've also we've also developed a number of case studies, and that's something which we look to continue during the lifetime of the project, um, which is going out and speaking to individuals involved in um, in uh, technology enhanced learning. So people who have kind of uh, effectively utilised pedagogic technology enhanced learning within their own institution, um, and we also have a development blog uh, which is up at. Uh, teltoolsproject.tumblr, so we're going to um, upload the case studies to that as well as um, any ongoing kind of information about the development of the platform. So I'm going to hand you over to my colleague Roshi now, who's going to talk about national impact. Okay. Thanks, Dara. Um, I'll just kind of quite, quite briefly go through, through this. Um, in terms of national impact, I suppose this is, this is a way of um, summarizing some of what Dara was talking about. So essentially the project um, is looking to equip instructors with the, the tools and knowledge to actually um, use technology enhanced learning within the classroom. Um, so th through that then we'll have uh, training that's structured for custom learning um, so that, the actual, they, that a user can actually get at the content depending on whatever path that they want to, um, whatever experience level that they're at as well. Um, so what we were looking at as well is that the content will be beneficial for staff from industry that may not have any pedagogical uh, training. So this to us is kind of key as well because you would often find that in um, IOTs that someone would come in with a wealth of experience and maybe not have the, the actual pedagogical training. Um, that content will also be beneficial for staff who are familiar with teaching and learning approaches but maybe lack technical ability. So this is what Dara was talking about in terms of the personas um, that we were looking at. Yep. Ultimately then, um, what, what we see is a trickle-down effect uh, benefiting the students, that um, the development of the skills and knowledge and the confidence that the lecturers will have will actually benefit the students in terms of um, sort of creative um, classrooms. Um, and then enhance digital literacy as well um, on, part, on the part of the instructors as well as, as the students. So just quite quickly there, um, I mean, as Dara mentioned as well, the, the, the development is, is quite iterative and this, this, is, it, this kind of carries over in terms of the dissemination as well. So initially we have things like the information sessions and case studies which are part of the actual content of the project. So using these to disseminate the materials, um, networking, you know, the project partners have quite an extensive um, network themselves. 
Um, the typical online dissemination methods through the blog, through the website, through the platform itself, um, social media, things like that. The existing um, tell units and work that the partners are doing, particularly any workshops that partners are doing, we're trying to kind of leverage off that and, and, and work with that um, when, when disseminating the products. The distribution of outputs, um, these will be all, all the outputs will be distributed with Creative Commons licenses. Um, so this is what we expect would, would help the, the products to actually get out there. And then looking at the, the options of papers and, and different conferences. Um, so in terms of the, the three benefits, I'm going to one-up the lads and have uh, five benefits, um, but, but they, are quite, uh, they are quite linked really. Um, we're ultimately looking at engaging and empowering staff and through that then will um, help to improve the student experience. Um, again, with the personas, we're looking at offering sort of flexible programs, not only having things that are chunked, like the information be nice and bite-sized, but also that um, a lecturer or maybe support staff can come in at it um, wherever they feel comfortable in terms of their own experience. And things then about creating like a, your, your platform being an online community that um, through case studies and things like that, that lecturers are helping each other. So it's a bit of peer learning as well. Okay. Thank you. Thanks very much. <laughs>